and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Soul Tie Control. This is uh, basically the the same deck that we played about maybe ten days a, get, a day, ten days ago, or so, <laughs> where it was uh, I labeled it as Soul Tie Mid Range at that point. It was a donation deck um, submitted by a viewer, and and we did really well with it. The reason why I'm changing it to control now instead of mid-range is I took out the Gilded Goose. Basically, that's like the main thing that we, that I did was just take out... Uh, we had four Gilded Goose and I replaced those. And I put an extra Ritual of Sit in the main deck. We only had one. And got a Vraska in there. Got a couple Hydroid Krasis as well. This is still kind of a mid-range deck. I, you know, So it could really go either way. Call it mid-range or control. But we're not, we're not attacking too much. Basically, our only card that we're really attacking with um, kind of early is Questing Beast, just because Questing Beast is just such a strong card. It's just so good. So we got, um, you know, we got the Questing Beast in here. They you know, they help they help take down Planeswalkers. They put a lot of pressure on the opponent, and all that kind of stuff. So we can kind of play an aggro deck because of of Questing Beast. But for the most part, we're, we're control. As you can see, we just got all sorts of interaction. Again, we're focused on the Planeswalkers. It's kind of been a theme today with the Teamer Walker deck also where um, Planeswalkers are in a pretty good spot right now. There's a lot of sweepers being played, a lot of time wipes, and a lot of um, of the giant uh, sweeper. And also, besides that, Oko makes it really hard to play creatures because you know if you have like these cool creatures on the battlefield that have like these special effects, well, Oko can just plus one and turn it into a 3-3 elk. And so it's really hard playing um, creatures against Oko. So instead, we want to be playing Planeswalkers. That's what our deck can do. Um, and, you know, we have we have just good interactions. So, like, we have, like, Assassin's Trophy, like, one of the best interaction spells. It just, you know, can destroy any type of permanent. Murderous Rider, you know, get rid of creatures and Planeswalkers. So we have a lot of Planeswalker removal in here with those. Um, Liliana's and Garrick's are just really powerful to take over games um, and everything like that. So what are my thoughts on Tamiyo Drawn from Dreams, Lockmare Serpent? There, yeah, those those are all good cards as well. There's a lot of good cards you can play. Those are a little slower than uh, what we're really doing here, I suppose. I guess that's that's like a, a way to, to to label that would be slower. But yeah, let's let's give this a shot. I'm I'm pretty excited about this deck. I think this deck kind of has it has a lot of good stuff, and I think it I think it can be really good against Field of the Dead. I think we have we have kind of everything for Field of the Dead. Uh, especially after sideboard when we have Ashiok and on Mordigo. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Murder's Rider is kind of Ravenous Chupacabra 2.0. Yep. That's a good. Um, it's a good comparison. I actually thought I was keeping that hand. I clicked the wrong button. I meant to keep that hand. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> uh, Questing Beast is just much more powerful than Wrinkle. Yeah, I just I wanted a lot a lot better. Wrinkle is more powerful whenever you have an excess of creatures to sacrifice. Well, that's unfortunate. This hand is not very good. <laughs> the drown and the locks are going to do anything for a little while. I do like to see my opponent playing once upon a time. That helps drown in the lock. Rider, Rider, Order, Wrinkle. I mean, I guess taking Wrinkle just turns on their Order of Midnight, though. Just get that back. So I, I guess that's just a bad play. I don't know.
I really wish I would have just kept the first hand. This hand is much worse. All right, well, that hand was just really bad. <laughs> that was not a good mulligan decision by me. It's unfortunate I just threw that game away. Oh, well. All right, so Drown on the Lock looked really bad there. But it's, it's more of a late game kind of card anyway. I definitely want this other Ritual of Soot. I'm not sure if there's anything else I definitely want. Ashiok can stop like their things coming back. I take out a six drop. Take out a Vraska. Now they have too many black creatures for Noxious Grasp. Oh yeah, in instead I brought in uh, Ritual of Soot for the beasts and stuff. The love struck beast. Yeah, we got a, a much better opener. We can actually have cards to play. Or at least mana to play cards. I guess that's that's what I meant there. Go, Questing Beast, go! Yeah. Yeah, that, yep, that's a really sweet interaction with Mu Yanling and Noko to be able to shrink a creature's power so that Noko can steal it. Another murderous rider. And Davriel and some drill bits.
was quite unfortunate. That is quite unfortunate. That means I get to turn on double double drill bit and and kill my questing beast. Wow, what a draw. <laughs> yeah. I guess I can kill this thing first. Beasts are still going to trade, but might as well just get that 1-1 one, one also. Like, basically paying 4 life to kill that 1-1. One, one. That's what I just did there. So, opponents ahead. <clears throat> They get, you know, I have, I have nothing. They have an innkeeper and a murderous rider. And they get the two cards. Wouldn't be a bad spot for a Ritual of Soot. Warrior Queen Necromancer has a nice Oh, come on. Don't have removal. Oh, okay. It cycled. Putrid, but effective. Questing Beast card is pretty good. This looks like a fun new toy. Bias, thank you so much for that resub. Getting close to another 12 hour stream. That is right. Oh, and that is actually sub number 20, according to MTG Bot. So I guess I was behind one. That's uh, sub number 20 there. Thanks, bias screen. All right, so not a great showing for our deck. I kept, or I accidentally mulliganed my, my seven card hand game one when I didn't mean to. So like, and then I kept a really crappy six card hand there. And then game two, it looked good for us until, let's see, there's there's not enough lands of this hand. This one I want a mulligan. Ugh, going to five. Hey, Artis. Thanks for keeping that hype going. It looked good until that the Questing Beast top deck, not the second one, like the first Questing Beast top deck. Number 21. Alright, so we're only playing with five cards here. We'll see how it goes. Same matchup we just had. I 
need a card draw and recursion terribly. So yeah, I did draw from Dreams of Tamiyo. I mean, I've... I don't, I don't know if we really do need like those cards. Those cards are so slow. Uh, these these sleeves were a special these were a special sleeve given out at, at TwitchCon. Um I mean I don't I don't think things need to change about the deck because of that that last match. I mean I messed that up really bad with that first mulligan decision. For sure. And this is just a five card a five card hand. I, I did want a little bit more card draw in the deck, which is why I added the two Krasis. This is my first time playing the deck with Krasis. I didn't I never I've ne I haven't had Krasis before in the deck. Yeah, you can you can find the teamer deck list by going to the stream decker page here or you can go to the YouTube channel as well and find it there. Going to try the double block. All right, well, I was bluffing. I had I had nothing to stop that. So call my bluff. No removal over here. So I can take three to draw a card. I think I'll just play Murderous Rider. Um, there's nothing wrong with opt. Um, again, I just, I just like having, uh, I like having more, um, I mean, I just don't, I don't like having as much air, you know, cards that that all they do is find like like one card that all it does is find another card. I want I want my cards to be you know powerful cards. Now to be to be fair um Op does a good job finding like exactly what you're looking for. You can do that. You know, if we want like a ritual of set it can do that. It can find ritual of set. If I were you, I'd just surrender right now. <laughs> Rise! <laughs> You'd play the Wish Fairy over Opt? They do, they do, those do drastically different things. Wish Fairy is a very expensive card and you have to completely change your sideboard and everything. It's, that's a drastically different card than Opt. My army has been destroyed. Everybody always tells me that the the wolf is just great. Everybody always says that they they you know play a bunch of wolves in their their Oko decks, and they just say the wolf is just great. But every time I play the wolf, it is one of the very worst cards in my deck. My opponents always just have like Oko and or like like they're not my opponents either like not playing creature, so it doesn't do anything, or they're just playing Oko and turn get like make it so the wolf can't be indestructible, or I don't have Oko in play and I don't have any. Thing, any food to sacrifice. 
Wolf never works out for me. All right, so I'm going to play the Veil of Summers. So I can't just easily kill my six mana walkers like they have been doing. We need to do a little bit better job drawing Ritual of Soot. I'm cutting trophies. We have enough like one for one removal. A one for one removal spell that also gets a, a land out of their deck. So a card that's two for wanting myself. I, I don't want to play it. All right, so we have a good looking opener here. I yeah, I've, I've only put in Vraska like just for like the last little bit here. I haven't played very much Vraska. I think my opponent definitely has a Veil of Summer. Rather they're playing pretty slow. We've gotten to, to Tuck. We've gotten to Tuck a whole lot of um, lands. All right, played around Veil of Summer. This is gross. I want to get a land out, but I also don't want to shuffle these three lands back. Oh, that's gross. I wish I would have grabbed a swamp out now. So I'm saving ritual. So basically, they would draw one extra card if I cast Ritual of Soot. Um, ritual of Soot gets around Veil of Summer. So by using two spells, and, you know, Murderous Rider is kind of like half a spell. We get rid of cards that get Veil of Summered, and we also give them one last card. Your corpse will make it. What a good 
good mindless minion. Basically, if they have removal spell for Liliana, we're going to be in trouble. If they don't have removal spell for Liliana, we're going to win. we're going to take over and win. It's all about if they have. So if the, we'll see if they have removal for Liliana or not. Hmm. Another Veil of Summer. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. Welcome to the feast. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's playing some magic. Kind of incredible if my opponent doesn't play a land here. They don't have another land drop. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven mana. A little death never hurt anyone. Surely you must be famished. So we're dead to smitten sword masters. Have to have another one. Yep. I mean, maybe. I mean, I could have to protect against to protect against that scenario. I could have minus four the Liliana like I did, and then just play the new Liliana and minus four again. That would have protected better against that scenario of getting drained out. I tried for the Legion's end. My opponent did have another Veil of Summer. But try for the, the Legion's end. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he's doing. He's just he's just hanging out. You feel judged right now. <laughs> All 
All right, waiting on our opponent. Burning Light with the Twitch Prime sub. Thanks for that. Thanks for the uh, support there, Burning Light. I appreciate that. And Danny with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Danny. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel. It's mm. not poison. Trust me. Well, this Oko card's pretty good. It's pretty good. Dropping it turn two on the play is probably better than turn three on the draw. One bite, and all your cares are gone. This is a pretty poor showing for the deck, though. Uh, I was This was the deck that I was looking forward to playing the most today. I, I played it... Uh, I just played it just two matches um, earlier today off of stream and won both of those matches. But it looks like we're about to be on three. Here on stream... Walk with me, sing with me, I will enlighten you. So obviously Oko is dead. There's nothing I can do to keep my Oko alive. So it's basically what do I d want to do against them. I th think I want to turn Let's this goose into a 3-3. Three, three. With them having just forest, forest, forest for a mana base over here. Or, you know you're not in a great spot whenever your like best play is giving your opponent a bunch of three threes, when that's like your most desirable play. It would help if we drew a spell. Four draw steps here, four lands. And that does not help. Why not turn the the food into a three three? Because they can just make more food. Oh, for for my opponent. Oh yeah, I, I don't know why my opponent didn't turn their food into a three three. I don't know. Hey, five draws, five lands. Five draws, five lands. Our first game that we lost is because we only had two lands and we couldn't draw any more. So we're fighting, finding new and exciting ways to win. By win, I mean lose. That's what I meant to say. Finding new and exciting ways to lose. What's mine is yours, and yours is mine. Hey, six draws, six lands. Six for six.
Uh, Legion's End. I suppose we am I possibly supposed to cut Oko? Let's try no questing beast against the Oko deck that can turn questing beast into a three three. Let's try that. <laughs> there you go, put uh pot a lot. Saying every time I play while watching the stream, I win the game. There you go. That's that's awesome. See, I'm giving I'm giving you my luck. Happy to do that. Don't have. I mean, I should just keep the land. But we're gonna be playing Fable Passage turn two. I say I don't have a way to play the Thought Erasure on two. Our hand does kind of look gross, though. Like, you know, Drown and Lock, we're, like, never going to be able to play. We have two six-mana cards. Our hand does look pretty gross. It's basically, we have turn two Thought Erasure <laughs> and Prey. Ooh. Well, that's a lot better. We don't have to play into a Veil of Summer. It's kind of the problem with playing blue-black decks these days, is everybody's playing Veil of Summer. Oh, never mind. Played into Mystical Dispute. All right. Well, that got me. That's got me. Ether gust, ether gust. Kind of want to draw lands and try to get to these. Uh, try to get to these six drops. Two cards over here. It's a green. So you're telling me it has to be green? Not playing red cards. Land. Come on, deck. You can do it. Draw this land. Draw this land. Draw this land. No. Oh, what a tilt. I don't want that land now. Ah, oh, what a tilt. We're going to be able to play Ugin. Guess maybe I should keep that land. I could have Veil of Summer protect Ugin. I suppose. Um, yeah, that was not specific enough. Wow. 
The opponent does not want to play their Krasis. It's just fine with me. When you understand reality, I'll take the Zugan on an empty-ish battlefield. They're like, more food, more food. All right, we got two land scry to the bottom. So that's good. So, of course, they don't have the ability to Aether Gust right now, so I'm going to be able to play Garrick and have Garrick kill Krasis. So I get to kill Krasis, draw a card, and then still tick up on Ugin. All right, Radical Guru. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. I kind of wanted to draw that watery grave so I could have Drown in the Lock available. But, oh well. Yeah, that would have been a good card to Drown in the Lock. The brambles of truth twirl and curl, choking out lies. Surely you see the humor here. It turns out having multiple six mana planeswalkers in play is pretty good. And so we finally got to that point in one of these games. Thankfully our opponent's interaction doesn't really interact. Very efficiently. Yeah, it's such a cool card. The Cursed Huntsman. Much cooler than Oko. What happened if, if Oko make Ugin token a 3-3? Do you lose the card? No. No, you still... No, because that's that's like an, an Ugin ability of like the... It's not like, like the card doesn't necessarily have to do that. So, no, you would, you would still be able to get the card whenever the creature dies. So, no worries there. Yeah, see, you don't get annoyed when Garrick stomps you into the ground, but you find it infuri infuriating when Oko does. The thing is, is because Oko is so cheap, like, you know, it happens so early on in the game. You know, Garrick, with it costing six mana, you've already played like a, a you know, you've probably played like a, a game of reasonable length and, um, you know, had like some back and forth and all that kind of stuff. Wallow in your deceit. I should tick up before I scryed. I did that before. I just didn't do that that time. But I'm... I know I could minus three Ugin and not use a Murderous Rider, but I'd, I'd rather just use a Murderous Rider and, you know, have Drown in the Lock and, and just have Ugin continue to tick up and get more 2-2s two out here to get more card advantage. And plus, that was a time where... Well, I guess we don't know that they don't have, but... 
our murder threader did not get Vela summered, so that was good. Yeah, you'd be pretty upset with turn two Garrick still. Yeah. That's that's the that's the main difference. You don't get turn two Garrick. Our, our opponent likes their color hosers, so that's multiple mystical disputes, multiple ether gust. Get to a game three, I'm gonna have to kind of remember to play around oh mystical dear. mystical dispute better. We are the apex predators. I grace you with my lack of presence. Those blind to tyranny are lost. The fabric of the multiverse obeys me. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. <laughs> Look at those biceps. That axe weighs probably weighs more than Todd. <laughs> All right, we're going wide. Ugh. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the wild. Well, that gets to kill one of these planeswalkers. Remember, you reap what you sow. Poor Garrick. Your new look is enchanting. Attack. I was attacking them. <laughs> that was very woke turn. Viv yeah, Vivian killing Garrick. That was a pretty woke turn. If you want the... If you want the the playlist, um, yeah, there you go. That's that's how you get the actual song. Or if you want playlist, you can do exclamation point playlist. Oh, oh, go. <laughs> Thanks, Muggle. All right, opponent. What you gonna do? You putting the Yoko back on top? You, you gonna cast something? Not cast anything? Make a food with with the goose. What are, what are we doing over here? What are we doing? 
Okay, that's going back on top. Oh no, Arena. Yeah, yeah, I have different audio tracks that I'm using. Like one one for the recording and one for YouTube. I'll shear the wool from your eyes and spin you clarity. It's basically just the the music only goes like the music isn't being recorded. I you to change your ways. That's really all that's going on there. Looking over there because Hawkeye covering that up. They can make make a food and eat it, and then go to five. No, I don't think our opponent is sniping at all. Yeah, I think our, our opponent's just being deliberate. They're just playing deliberately. I haven't, like, had any cards in hand for, like, a long time. Anyway. So we'll probably do it. There we go. You cannot trophy. You can't trophy your own things. Yeah. So got to trophy opponent stuff. All right. Game number three. We are. We had a good start there on the being on the play and everything let's see if we can get there for a third game as well which liliana is the best yeah it's probably liliana the veil liliana the last hope is quite good though also um th those two are, are those are definitely the two top lilianas like their head and shoulders above the rest. The most underrated Liliana was definitely Liliana Death's Majesty. That was a really underrated Liliana. Maybe my pro my opponent's kind of having like some internet troubles. 
Maybe I mean they could just be you know thinking a whole lot, but it seems like like how it suddenly. I, I kind of feel like it's internet troubles or something. Yeah, same. Same. I mean the animations are cool, but if if Arena worked a lot smoother and and it wasn't laggy all the time and having to restart the client every couple you know yeah every couple of matches and stuff i would i would take that over no animations as well but i also like i like the animations i wish we could have both that that's what i'm thinking at river uh riverium i i don't think it's the animations that cause the inst instability though With that being said. All right, I'm going turn one Fable Passage for Island. Maybe not. Yay, not turn two Oko. Yay, not turn to Oko. Oh, right. Waiting on me. <laughs> I can't see like this part of the screen, like down here in the bottom right, because that's that's where Hawkeye's sitting. I can see the trophy in my hand, but I can't see but I can't see like past the trophy. Like like this is like as far as I can see. And so I have to look at the other screen over there, so I didn't realize they were waiting on me. Yeah, we get to have all untapped lands with the Fable Passages. The one problem with that, though, is we are... Let's play this thing. I'll just go get Swamp next turn. We are shuffling, of course, and so like that's kind of the problem with, with Scry lands and Shuffle lands, like Fetch lands and Scry lands. They don't work perfectly together because, you know, like there's a reason why we don't want that, why we don't want that land that we move to the bottom. But now we're going to shuffle it back. Definitely feel like my opponent has mystical dispute. Hmm. I guess they have that card too. I wanted to I want to wait a turn, like, you know, I want to I want to have five mana with Ritual of Set. And we don't really need need to ritual of set these things yet. Please, no crisis. That's a bad sign for me. I guess I sh should have sooted last turn. Would have prevented this crisis for 10. It's an extra three cards they could draw with Gilded Goose. So that's unfortunate. They get to draw an extra three cards, but then I also get Krasis. Oh, they only went six. Now we do get to sweep up Krasis into a set, though. If 
fetching before scrying. All right, so they got five cards. We have five cards. We're basically tied up. There are another two cards in their library, though. Even though I had the, the two fetches that took two cards out. I protect that which cannot protect itself. Rise, my elemental friend. I could just do this on their upkeep. And make them tap lands if they have interaction. So they still have five cards over there. Hopefully three lands and two spells. Stop wanting to tap all my black sources. Ooh, our own crisis. Wait, so they didn't play a land last turn, so they got all spells over there? I'd rather use Assassin's Trophy on Questing Beast than Drown in the Lock. I want I want to have Drown in the Lock counter stuff like Oko. Counter things that have ETB effects where like Trophy, you know, like Questing Beast is powerful but doesn't have an ETB effect and we can Trophy that. I mean, their, their clock could just be stopping all the time because of food tokens, but we've seen Mystical Disputes and Aether Gus. But man, they were playing slow. They're down to 9.30 compared to my 18... Six, so basically 19 minutes. All right, so Krasis stops this 3-3 from attacking. We'll try trophying the questing beast.
And so, yeah, I'm not loving giving them more mana considering they just have so many cards now. Well, that's just kind of what we got to do. Uh, am I auto-tapping? Oh, I, I could have cast Trophy and Veil. Oh, I should have shocked. I could have had Trophy and Veil. We can probably just untap and Trophy, though. Probably don't need a shock. Each. Each life total is important with having Castle. Arclight was pretty good. We we ran into some bad variants with our losses. Our, our wins, we just demolished our opponent. It looked like it was it was real good against the blue black control decks. Struggled a little bit against aggro, but talked about some ways to fix that. I think our mana base needed just a, a slight. Basically, our mana base needed a slight change, um, but we got uh, we were a little unfortunate. With our losses, our losses were like all of our arc lights are down at the bottom, kind of thing. Your new look is and just made that bigger. Thanks. And just no attacks. Double Mystical Dispute. I can play around Mystical Dispute pretty easily. Rise and shine. And of course we have Veil of Summer anyway. I see you don't share my vision. No, my, my opponent would have been the best off just they should have just targeted one of their food and made it one of their food into a 3 3. At least that, that's what I would have done with Oko there. It's turned a food into a 3 3. I would have. Probably would have traded Questing Beast though. A little surprised my poets never cast those mystical disputes. Certainly had to have one whenever I played Krasis. I mean, they're I guess they're trying to play around Veil of Summer. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. Well, that's a huge problem. Get him. Dev is enlightened. So I may have to just get rid of the Liliana to take out this questing beast. Because I can, like, Ritual of Soot, and then... Uh... Okay, trophy for Vivian. Vivian. 
No, let's trophy this thing. Attack Vivian. Then Soot. And then tick up Liliana. Back to the woods. We get to draw three. Like a fun new toy. Okay, we're doing good. Opponent's got five minutes left to kill me. Yeah, our hand. We have we have the two veil summers that counter these two. So like we got those covered. And then we got two removal spells as well. Looking good. They need to draw like a, a Krasis, get them a whole bunch of cards. Putrid, but effective. So I could either pay the three or cast Veil of Summer. I'm gonna cast Veil of Summer. In case they just have mass manipulation somehow. We can have our other Veil of Summer up. Yeah, I was planning on playing another match after this one, but we're already past 10 o'clock now. Watch out. These woods get awful dark. Such a slow format, but it, it hurts whenever you have opponents that take a long time, but... This is just such a slow format. <laughs> you cannot run or hide. Yeah, Liliana and Garrick working together. Arr. Don't really see this game ending other and in, in any other way than us winning. Whether we actually attack our opponent for lethal or not before these three minutes are up, we'll see. Garrick has definitely sped up the clock considerably, though. Yeah, if we were just making a 2-2 two -two a turn, that takes a while. But now making three 2-2s two a turn, 6 power turn instead of 2 power turn. Our, our hand is just loaded. All right, Apex Predators. <laughs> All right, we have exactly 14 powers. We have exactly 14 power in play. Yeah, and I, I could do that next turn also, like Liliana minus into Garrick minus for ultimate. But we have we have lethal this next turn. And I have Negate with Veil of Summer, lots of mana. Mystical Dispute doesn't even counter stuff because we can just pay for Mystical Dispute. Yep, yep, we could also...
grasp and murderous rider our wolves to old Garrick if we want. Okay. All right, we're going to play one more. We're going overtime here. It's already after 10. I want to play more than just three matches of this deck. You know, Esper Hero is kind of, you know, Esper Hero. We've, we've seen lots of games of, of Esper Hero. I want to play one more match of this deck. Hopefully play a faster one, though. Hopefully a faster one. The first two matches, like, we're against the same deck. We lost both of those. <laughs> yeah, final boss. No, I don't have any casualties of war in here. All right, going to just lead off with Fable Passage to take a land out of the deck. Because, of course, I, I don't want to draw land. So we're going to get one land out. I don't know if it will help too much. We'll see. Looks like my opponent's playing Field of the Dead. That'd be my guess. Which I like our I like our post board cons configurations against Field of the Dead. Oko helps, or not Oko? Okay, sorry, uh, trophy helps. Surely you must be famished. you to change your ways <clears throat> all right so we're not gonna let this golos do anything if they want to play a new golos you know they have to sacrifice this one Yeah, we could have st stolen Golos. I like having Oko with more loyalty and everything, though. Ugh. Agent of Treachery is the best card ever. Alright, I guess I should have stolen Golos. One bite, and all your cares are gone. Before I make you disappear. Closed-minded. Mm. Agent of Treachery, so good. <sighs> it seems fortune favors you. Yeah, Age of Treachery probably is the yeah. It's probably my least favorite card to play against too. It's it's so brutal, it's so brutal. Let's 
so brutal. It's it's the card that I I, I bring in on like I have on more ego for Agent of Treachery, honestly. Like that's I don't I don't even name, I don't name Field of the Dead anymore. It's just on it's just Agent of Treachery, and that's why we're playing a bunch of disdainful strokes as well. Um. Supposed to play this. Taking I take out Drown on the Lock because that with Ashiok isn't really much of a combo. Uh, Golgari Queen can go. Trim an Oko. Trim the Ugin. So I've got four cards. What else did I cut before? Did I just take out Questing Beast? No. Murderous Riders? Two murderous rider, one soot, one beast. We just don't need three blue green lands, so I'm going to put back a breeding pool. We just don't need three blue green lands. Not a bad card. Kind of need another black land. Awesome, Blowny Pony. Happy to hear that, man. Good job. <laughs> yep, got some Tegan and Sarah. Need more black mana. So, Agent of Treachery and Field of the Dead. Those are the two cards we want to see. All right, Ofer. We've done a pretty bad job of, of milling over those two cards today. If you show remorse, yeah, the fairies are just kind of cyclers here. I don't, don't care about them too much. Still whiffed. I lost my appetite. Where's Agent of Treachery? Yeah, not not the best exiles there. I am not making this up as I go. 
Trust me. You'll thank me later. This might be a bad idea. You. <clears throat> now what? My Not great. Was but a dream. Uh, we're still over and. And drew six drop, six drop, last two draws with four oh, lands. The hero thing before. So this is not going very well for me. We finally got one field of the dead. This has been a nightmare. Yeah, we're just all, yeah. So I'm sure my opponent's just drawing the That's all the agent of treacheries now. We got rid of all the all the bad cards. Yay! Oh, uh, what a draw. All right, so there's just two. So field. So obviously still the three field, the two Golos. Come on, get some fields. All right, we got one field. All right, so Agent Treachery is gone. Two field are gone. Okay, so I didn't really check to see how many more crises there were. A619 is going good. Going good. Here goes nothing. <clears throat> yeah, two fields down. We're going to trophy another field here, so it'll be three fields down. Hopefully draw a black source where I get to like trophy plus play murderous rider and work towards Ugh. I mean they're gonna just grow spiral anyway oh no no grow spiral I kind of assume with the the shock there they're gonna grow spiral Guess I need to kill Golos before they get to untap and activate Golos. So they still have two more Golos, one more field. Let's draw sixth mana. Ugh. Did you just not have the other Golos? At least for a little while. Just, just not have Golos? Alright, maybe we'll draw Legion's End. Or a Ritual of Set. Or a Land. That is not good enough. Man. I had so much good stuff. I mean, honestly, maybe I need to cut more six mana planeswalkers. Maybe that's what I need to do. But whoops. I didn't mean to actually do anything. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can't I can't do anything here. 
I had Ashiok. Unfortunately, I really didn't have hardly anything else to go with Ashiok. But yeah, I, I, I could have trimmed because the six mana walkers like are only like really that good after you really take control. Oh, I, I mean, I did have Unmoored Ego also. I can't, you know, I got to Unmoored Ego away the <clears throat> Agent of Treacheries. Um, so yeah, so that's Sultai Control. I was definitely, as I talked about before, I was excited to play the deck today. Um, I, I, uh, yeah, I thought it was going to do really well, but we only, we went one and three, so not so good. We lost to the green, black knight deck twice and then Field of the Dead, which I, I don't know. I don't feel bad about my Field of the, Field of the Dead matchup. Um, my hands were just like kind of really, were just like really awkward a lot. Like my, like not having enough mana, like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it is a powerful deck. Like I said earlier also, I played it, you know, after making these changes, I played it twice earlier today and I played against the Field of the Dead both times and I won both of my matches. So like on the day I'm, I'm two and one against Field of the Dead, but you know, y'all got to see the loss there. Honestly, Ashiok should maybe just be a four of. Because it's like, after you use your Ashiok, you just want to play another one. And just, it gets rid of their library so fast. But we didn't have very good Ashioks today. Didn't hit. Didn't hit too many Field of the Deads with it. Um, I don't know about the Krasis. The Krasis is like the new card that I added in, though, like after after playing some games. I didn't I didn't have the, the Krasis in my deck. Whenever I played this earlier today, I put that in afterwards because kind of thinking I wanted a little bit more card draw. But I'm not so sure about the crisis. Um, I had a third drown in the lock and one price of glory earlier. Um, but yeah, just kind of it's just kind of like another expensive card, and our our deck already has like. Like these six these six mana planeswalkers are are awesome. Like they they take over the game kind of thing. With all the Golos running rampant, would an Ashiok Tamio deck be an interesting approach? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean Tamio Tamio is awesome with like Unmoored Ego. Also there. Ashiok's just kind of like the best card to be playing right now. Um Maybe maybe we need to go lower. I mean, kind of like our team like the teamer deck. You can do this with Sultai though also. But maybe you need to have like, you know, four Grazer, four Goose, so you get so you can have Ashiok on turn on turn two more often. Just need turn two Ashioks. <laughs> but but yeah. Um yeah, I could go, yeah, could definitely play this with, yeah, Kefnet, Drawn from Dreams. Um, playing Kefnet allows you to play Casualties of War as your six mana card. I've, I've just found, like, that kind of soul tie with, you know, going Tamio, Drawn from Dreams, Kefnet, Casualties of War. I've found that it really struggles winning games. Maybe with Oko in the, in the fold, though. I haven't played that version with Oko. You know, I haven't played that, like, this format. Um, I've played that, I've played that version a lot previously but maybe with with oko maybe oko helps you finish games better kefnet is is pretty pretty terrible against three mana to fairy and yeah there's still a lot of three mana to fairies around and kefnet is is just pitiful against three mana to fairy because not only does the teferi bounce it and everything but you don't even get to cast the even if you have kefnet in play you don't get to cast the cards because it's a fairy. But. So I don't know. So if you're watching on YouTube, of course, leave comments. Let me know what you think in the uh, comment section. What do you, what do you want to do uh, with this kind of deck and everything? If you uh, feel free to leave some comments over there on YouTube. Um, but uh, thanks so much for watching Soul Thigh Control. Also, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But again, thank you very much for watching. 
and I'll see you for the next video.